Eat, drink, explore, weekly travel deals extravaganza. And a very good day, everyone. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by the lovely, talented Patty Pyburn. And it is time to hear insight from the best of the best, the gurus of bargains, the luminaries of budget travel. And this week, we are taking a look at home port cruising. I hope I'm... I hope that's what we're talking about. No, I think, I think so. Sounds good. It does. Let's it does. go with that. <laughs> and Drew Daly with Cruise One and Cruises Inc. is on the line with us right now. We get to speak with Drew every three months or so about the uh, cruising as an option for your vacation. Hey, welcome to the program, Drew. Hey, good morning, Randall. Thanks for having me back. I'm very excited to be here. And you got it right. It is home port cruising we're going to talk about today. So, Oh, fantastic. Now, I just need to mention quickly, during the commercial break, uh, I just got off the phone with uh, celebrity chef Ted Allen, um, who was calling in to be on the show, but uh, there were some wires crossed because uh, we have celebrity chef <laughs> Nathan Lyon coming into the studio later on. And uh, Ted is in town for uh, Sunset Savor the Central Coast. And while you won't catch him on the show today, uh, you will catch him the entire day up at yes. Savor at yes. Santa Margarita Ranch. He will start with a book signing at 1045. And then he said there's like some sort of like burger bash and then some Ooh. lamb thingamajig. Yes, and the lamb jam. The lamb jam. Yeah. And then he told me, uh, he goes... He goes, wow, my schedule's packed. I don't even have time for lunch. But he goes, but I guess my entire day is lunch. <laughs> it's, it's in the right place. <laughs> right. So at any rate, uh, Ted, if you're listening, uh, sorry we didn't have you on the show today, but we'll have him back at a future date for sure. Okay, now <clears throat> back to you, Drew. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I can catch a flight from Fort Lauderdale to see out there. <laughs> so anyway. Is that where you are right now, Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> yes, I am in the cruise capital of the world and happy to be here. It's um, it's a great, these are Sundays, the weekends are the best days down here just for all the cruise passengers oh, that come to yeah. really go experience the different islands of the Caribbean. But, you know, and really when we talk about, as you mentioned at the beginning, home port cruising, there are so many options, and the cruise industry has evolved over the years. But what we mean by home port cruising is that there are ports in the U.S. that have ships that sail from them. So, of course, on the West Coast, you have Los Angeles is a big hub there. Um, but Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, Galveston, Texas, New Orleans. Um, and in the Northeast sector, you have New York, Boston. So there's a lot of other smaller port cities around the U.S., but a lot of people just don't know. There are so many options that they can choose to um, cruise from and experience different islands, whether it be the Caribbean, whether it be Bermuda, or even Canada, New England, for that matter. Now, Drew, ships do have to make their way to another country at some point on the itinerary, right? Unless they are, unless they're registered in the United States, the law is that they have to hit up another country. Is yeah. That that's typically why you always see a stopover in like uh, Vancouver, for instance, on the way up to Alaska. You are absolutely right. Yes, indeed. And there's, um, actually, there's only one. Uh, there is in the Hawaii itinerary, Norwegian Cruise Lines, because their ship is registered in the U.S. They can do the Hawaiian Islands. But more often than not, you have to just because of the law. Um, and that's why a very popular from Los Angeles is to go visiting um, Ensenada, Mexico. Of right. Um, I think some of you may have done that in your years of cruising out there. So, yes. yes. In fact, I was so excited recently uh, – to see more California-based uh, cruising itineraries, and you're right, they do swing down to Ensenada just past the border to uh, satisfy that one condition. Um, but when I lived in San Francisco, uh, there very rarely would you see a, cru a really large cruise ship like you see on a daily basis there uh, in Florida. Uh, very rarely would you see a large cruise ship in the Bay. Uh, but after 9-11... That started to change because people were a little skittish about uh, flying overseas and that sort of thing. And so we saw people staying closer to home. Did that trend stick with us? Did it stay? It definitely did, you know. And, you know, it started slowly even prior to 9-11. But you're absolutely right. And, and people just didn't want the hassle of getting on an airplane. You know, they wanted to have the opportunity to drive and visit even local even if it's a five-hour drive from where they live, they get to stop at other U.S. cities along their way and get to experience the U.S. and then from there go on a cruise. So I think we've seen, and one of the things we've seen 
as a trend within the California coastline are these West Coast getaway cruises, these short stints that go up and down the Pacific Coastal. And they're, they're, they're throughout different parts of the year. There may be one-day to three-day cruises. They're called Pacific Coastal Getaways. And it's a, good, it's a great way for someone who's never cruised before to test the water, so to speak, and really get to understand the concept of cruising. And 85% of the U.S. population has never cruised, so they have no wow. idea what to expect. So. <laughs> well, Patty and I have cruised yes. together, and we'll tell you we know what to expect wow. a lot. Now, that's interesting, these short little stints that you're talking about, which I think is great, because some people feel a little intimidated to think, oh, if I don't like it and I'm on a five-day cruise, then I'm stuck. But, you know, when we were on our cruise together, Drew, Randall and I met people who were living a cruise life. They just went from ship to ship. That was their retirement. Oh, and there are people, you're absolutely right, it's amazing to me that have been on one ship because they just love the product, and they do the same itinerary, but it's just their ship becomes their home, and mm-hmm. they do it week after, like for six months at a time. And what? then, of course, they have the World Cruises in segments, so if you have the um, wherewithal that you can do that type of a journey for like six months, I mean, let's face it, not all of us have that expendable income or time. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's something to aspire to for, our, for us. <laughs> yeah, and then I guess you just arrange with your family, hey, we're going to be in Istanbul yeah. uh, on this day, so make right. sure you fly to come see us, and then we'll be in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah, and you know what else, though? Let's face it, technology is such a great, great... We're so privileged to live in this day and age with the technology. And people on board ships, they can still stay connected. They can be yeah. on their mobile devices, mm-hmm. whether it's their iPads or whatever device they have, their phones. And they really can stay connected. People actually are running their businesses from cruise ships. And the prices have come down. <laughs> what are we doing wrong? I know. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm trying to say. Initially, it was just a complete arm and a leg to use your cell phone or your uh, or your laptop on a cruise line. But I've noticed that those prices have come down in recent years because of the technology, right? And, and the customer demand, too. Yeah. It is. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing, too, just for everyone out there that's never taken the option of going on a cruise, I know that there's a lot of options out there. It can be complex in terms of what to expect. But you really can experience a seven-day cruise not that far from even the West Coast for as low as $500 a person. And that includes all your meals, your accommodations, your Las Vegas-style shows. I mean, it really is a, is an inclusive, a great inclusive option for someone who just wants – is, is tired of staying at a hotel. Do you get a better deal when it comes to cruises if you wait until the last minute? Is there like a sweet spot like there is with the airlines? Yeah. No, actually, it's the reverse of that. You get the better deal the farther, um, farther away that you do okay. book. So Good to know. Um, and it just depends on the value ads that are out there. The cruise lines are great at providing different promotional options, too. Right. So. All right, Drew Daly with both uh, Cruise One and Cruises Inc. We have links at eatdrinkexplore.com for the deals that they've got, and we will hear from Drew again in three months' time. So, Drew, thank you so much, and we'll be in touch in the next couple of weeks or so with that other project we're working on. All right, sounds good. Thanks again (laughs) for the opportunity, and if anybody wants to explore more, they can certainly visit cruiseone.com. We have franchises in California that can assist in their planning their next cruise. I love it. Thank you, Drew. Have a great day. Take care. Hey, stick around. Our compass hour is next. The word is fresh. Mm -hmm. We've got our trivia smackdown also. So (laughs) (laughs) stick around, everyone. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Thank you. 
Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat Drink Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat Drink Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very, very good final day of November. No. no, no why do I keep saying November? <laughs> September. <laughs> if it was the final day of November, I'd be really far behind on my Christmas shopping. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, final day of September. September yes. the 30th. Thank you, Patty, for keeping me... <laughs> In line. Uh, boy, Drew's good, isn't he? I just love having yeah, him on the show. Yeah, good information about cruising. He always has some good stuff. Next time, we'll drill him about great deals. Yes. Uh, but that, but I liked what he was talking about, the home cruising, because um, I think... We, For people who don't want to just jump, you know, take the plunge. Right. You know, and then hey, let's hope you don't when you're cruising. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Kelly's at the Grill at <clears throat> Hunter Ranch Golf Course is the sponsor uh, this hour. You know... What a great place to go to brunch today if you're heading up there for Savor, the Central Coast, mm-hmm. uh, which is the final day of it. Yes. And they have such cool stuff up there. I was there for the setup. Oh, of Savor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wish I was going today, but I'm not. Uh, Kelly's open seven days a week for breakfast and lunch. Happy hour. Hello. Daily from three to six. And then dinner Thursday, Friday and Saturday. I've had dinners there. They're delicious. I still need to catch the brunch. Uh, Kelly's at the grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course. They're right there on 46 East past Airport Road in Paso Robles, just across 46 from Everly Winery, uh, one of our other sponsors. So uh, if you get a chance, seriously, I'm not kidding. What a great view. It's a, mm-hmm. sort of a Beautiful. good getaway. If you want to like escape the crowd at some point, you mm-hmm. know, up there. You have this just wide open view. Yeah, beautiful of, setting. Oh, it's so gorgeous. All right, Patty, last hour you talked mm-hmm. about the plastic bag ban in San Luis yes. Obispo County goes into effect manana tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow morning, if you're heading to a store, bring your reusable bags with you. And Which you, know, you should already be doing. And I do. Yeah. Um, and I've just, you know, always am so frustrated when I forget and I leave them at home, but <laughs> yeah, I have too. them. You know, one thing that's interesting about the, how this works is you can reuse any bag. You can bring any bag, including your old, you know, people plastic keep bags. those old plastic mm-hmm. bags for, for reusing and those are fine to reuse again on your shopping trip. It's a great way to, you know, not be filling up the landfill. So. Right. And San Francisco's kicking in with this uh, tomorrow also. Mm-hmm. They already had it in place for the large supermarkets and pharmacies. Uh, but tomorrow it kicks in for all places, including, and this is not the case in San Luis Obispo, as I understand it, uh, restaurants. Big stores. Oh, yeah. It doesn't apply for restaurants, but in San Luis Obispo, it's the big stores, big box stores, grocery stores, convenience stores as well, and pharmacies. And it's countywide. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all seven municipalities, cities, and also the uh, unincorporated areas. Yes, it's across the county. And, you know, one of the big uh, motivators for our area for this is, is, I mean, it's generally a good idea, but the state has mandated uh, that uh, all counties reduce what the, what's going into landfill. And this is going to help San Luis yeah. Obispo County reach that goal by the year 2020 of reducing, I think it's 75 percent reduction in the amount of waste going into the landfill. So I've had a canvas bag since 1990, mm-hmm. 89 or 90, it was right in there. And I bought it at a, a store out in Colorado called King Super. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's one of the big chains out there. And um, 
I still have that bag, you know, and it, and over time I've accumulated bags, uh-huh. mostly because Patty, when she comes to a dinner party, brings her stuff in a, and one of those. And I leave it. at least one. <laughs> and I have a bunch of them. But here's the thing. Over time, it, it's it's just getting in the habit. I leave them at home. I leave them in the car. And then I'm like, well, I'll go out. No, I'm not going to go. I'm running behind. I'm not going to go out, out to the car. I'll just grab a bag this time, you know. Well, starting yes. tomorrow, there is no this time. No. Unless I want to pay 10 cents for 10 a paper cents bag. 10 cents for yeah. a paper bag. And even those, I encourage you to reuse. Yeah. So so. Uh, so just a little reminder. Go right now. Go put the bags out in your car so yes. you have them there. <laughs> so you're ready. <laughs> okay. A full hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio is still to come. And boy, we've got some great guests. We're going to talk about the county in the state with the freshest air. Yeah. And so a whole new trail system that's gone mm. in up there. Also, oops, I just kind of gave it away. You narrowed it down. (laughs) Celebrity chef Nathan Lyon joins us in studio as well. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning, live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County, and online at Eat, Drink, DrinkExplore.com. Also, check out our new free smartphone and tablet app. Simply search three words, Eat, Drink, Explore, either in Google Play on your Android device or in the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. This free app gives you access to contests, past radio segments, our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on The Crush. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your source for the lifestyle you love. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network, live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Fabulous. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very good morning, everyone. Glad you can join us for the show today. I am your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Pyburn, and we are coming to you live each and every week from our studios here on California's beautiful Central Coast. Right, Patty? That is right. It is beautiful mm-hmm. on the Central Coast. And we are here. I know. In fact, if you're watching us uh, online or via an app, uh, you can see all the sunshine behind mm-hmm. me. In fact, Patty, I'm going to raise the curtain just a little bit because the sun has done Yeah, it's moved up. It's yes, it's not shining directly into my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah, you can see uh, Higuera Street behind me there here in uh, San Luis Obispo where the studio is today. And we should let you know that this hour of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program is brought to you by, and this will be the final day this year anyway, that it's brought to you by Sunset Savor, the Central mm-hmm. Coast, the West Coast premier food and wine event September 27th, <laughs> which has already passed, through the 30th today to culminate California Wine Month. And each week we bring you current information on food, beverages, travel trends, mm-hmm. uh, so you can get the most out of your life. And this hour of the show we call the Compass Hour. It's a little bit of a spin on the typical talk show, right, Patty? All of the guests we have on and the topics for this hour of the program are tied together by one word. And this week's compass word is fresh. Fresh. And so with that word, (laughs) we will explore California's county with the freshest air. And and this is, you know, they take pollution readings and that sort of thing throughout the state. All across the state, yep. So uh, I think it's probably a surprise to everyone. We're headed to uh, Los Angeles County. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wow. Well, huh? Where are you getting your information? <laughs> no, uh, we'll keep it a secret for now where we're headed. But a whole new okay. trail system is uh, going in in that county. That, that, so you can explore some spots you couldn't before, which is very cool. All right. Interesting. And then the final half hour of the show, we'll have celebrity chef Nathan Lyon here in studio to talk about his whole thing is fresh in in fact, uh, he has a book that's based 100% on fresh. And so love uh, I love it. <clears throat> yeah, so we'll be speaking with him in just a little bit. But uh, right now, it is time for our trivia smackdown. And, you know, I said I was going to get that smack noise. You didn't get it. 
I forgot to uh, do it. Anthony, Smack. Uh, pull it up on your phone. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it over here. In the, <laughs> in the meantime, I just want to say, if you are watching us <clears throat> online right now, a big thank you to Patty's daughter, Dresden, mm -hmm. because our typical video person couldn't make it in this morning. Nope, he's not here. Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so at the last minute, Dresden said, uh, sure, I'll do it. And uh, Dresden, if you take the studio shot, if you click we'll on the studio you. shot, uh, you can wave to the camera up in the corner there. And, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone can uh, see Patty's absolutely beautiful uh, daughter, so who is uh, joining us uh, this morning. All right, so it is time for the trivia questions. Mm -hmm. And Patty, uh, as is typically the case, I let you go first. Okay. And so fire off. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. It, it stopped on me here, Anthony. Can you um, restart that and tell me what I have to press to get at the <laughs> SmackDown noise? <laughs> um, oh, there, there we okay, go. So I just hit this. Here we go. There okay, go. now <laughs> okay, the now SmackDown is on. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so Patty, give me the first question. So using the word fresh, it was a little challenging for me to find trivia about the word fresh, but I came up with fresh eggs. Okay. How can you tell if an egg is fresh? If um, if it spins or something, is it like uh, you put it on the table and if it... Uh... I don't know if that is a way. That is not the way that I'm talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> So. I haven't heard of that way. Uh, this is what I found online at several different egg websites. You place the fresh egg in water, and if it sinks to the bottom and it lies flat, then it is fresh and it should feel heavy. There's less air inside a fresh egg, so it sinks. If it's floating, that's a bad sign. Oh. It's it's actually probably fine for cooking and all of those kinds of things if you're within the date range. Right. If, it, if it's uh, floating, but it might be better for like a boiled egg. Okay, well then I'm going to have to give myself the... <laughs> I clearly didn't get that one right. Okay, <clears throat> now, according to the Dairy Council, Patty... Okay. Uh, this would be the California Dairy Council. The Dairy Council of California. The freshness date stamped on dairy products is a sell-by or a use-by date. So when you see, like, on a carton of milk, it says uh, November mm -hmm. 10th. That is a sell-by date. Is it? I think. It is, Patty. <laughs> you're right. It is a sell-by date. So, uh, and then... It's um, supposed to be good for... Seven... Uh, the, five to seven days after? Yeah, is that the, the range? carton of milk. It all, all depends on how cold you keep it and that sort of yes. thing. But if you keep it within the coldness range you're supposed to, uh, then, yeah, five to seven days after you open it. So it could say, let's say, for instance, it says October 1st. You can have it all the way through October 7th if you've kept it cold. Okay. And it smells I, right. <laughs> I have to admit that I'm one of those people who gets a little nervous uh -huh. when I think something is old. And even the idea that it might be old, sometimes I just can't bring myself to consume it if I think it's old. Uh huh. I know. No. So am I. Okay. I'm the same way. <laughs> All right, Patty. What All do you right. got? So um, I have to define fresh egg as in any egg that a chicken has is considered a fresh egg. Although okay. there is that distinction when we talk about farm fresh eggs, yes. which are exceptionally fresh uh -huh. and not, you know, haven't been going through the shipment and sitting in a store and so forth. So, but fresh eggs being just any egg a chicken lays, how many are eaten by Americans in the U.S.? So the average American consumes how many eggs per year? Uh, should I give you a range? Per, per year? No, yeah. I'll, I'll guess. He's going to uh, guess. I'm going to say. 300. Oh, you're really close. 246 oh. on average. So is that, do I get that? Or no, I should have. I should have given you a range. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. 75 billion <laughs> eggs produced in the U.S. a year. Wow. 75 B billion. Yes. Yeah. My sister has chickens on her property. She has fre literally fresh She's eggs. She's got the farm fresh She's eggs. got the farm fresh yes. Okay, so. We only have a couple minutes left here. According to the Eat, Drink, Explore Fresh Fruits and Veggies calendar, available on eatdrinkexplore.com, <laughs> the uh, bacon and fuerte varieties of avocado, mm -hmm. not Hass. Okay. And by the way, if you say Haas, that's not correct. It's, it's Hass. Hass. Like your rear another, end. <laughs> another word yeah. without an H in front and of it. And if you see it spelled <laughs> H-A-A-S, that's not right either. It's, it's H-A-S-S? -S? Yeah, because okay. that was the guy's House. last name, so there's no okay. really debate. Okay, so anyway, the uh, bacon and fuerte varieties of avocado hit their peak freshness when? Winter, summer, spring, or fall? And for extra credit, Patty, you can name the months. I think summer for the bacon avocado. I say summer. You say summer? All right. 
right. Well, Patty, then you really don't know your avocados. Oh, darn it. Uh, <laughs> it's actually winter, oh. and uh, they peak in January and February. I so did not know that. Okay. Hats are available year round. So yes, they why, are. That's, that's what we always, and they also are durable in the supermarket for shipping yes. and so forth. Okay. okay, Patty. One last one, really quickly. Yes. Uh, do farm fresh eggs. Now we're talking about organic, free range, pasture fed, mm -hmm. you know, farm fresh eggs. Do they have more or less cholesterol than store bought eggs? I'm going to say they have exactly the same. I'm going to tell you that according to some USDA sustainable agriculture and research education program studies, they have less. Oh, wow. Well, 34% less. I didn't get that right. I have so, one more question for you, but I'm going to have to do it after the <laughs> we'll break wait. here. Yes. The suspense is building. I want to. This, one is, <laughs> this uh, is your big question. I liked this question, yeah, and I don't want to let it go. <laughs> okay. But stick around, everyone, because we will be talking fresh air in the next segment and the county in California that apparently has the freshest. Back in a moment. The historic Santa Margarita Ranch, exactly halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles off Highway 101, was founded in the mid-1700s and served as an assistant mission to the nearby mission in San Luis Obispo. The 14,000 acres that make up the ranch today have served a variety of purposes over the years, including grazing land for large herds of Mexican cattle, prime vineyard land, and this fall will once again host the main event for Sunset Savor the Central Coast, the West Coast premier food and wine event, September the 27th through the 30th to culminate California Wine Month. Meet top chefs from the Central Coast as well as nationally recognized culinary celebrities. Several chef demonstrations will be featured, including the Battle of the Bay, hosted by the Food Network's Ted Allen of Chopped. To purchase tickets, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. You've heard us talk about Sunset Savor the Central Coast for the past month now, and today is the final day to take advantage of this amazing event at Santa Margarita Ranch. The festivities start right when the show ends at 10 o'clock this morning and continue through the day until 5 this evening. You can wander the marketplace and taste from more than 100 local wineries, sample small bites from restaurateurs, or relax in the Estrada Garden with a beer from one of the local breweries. Hey, you can also listen to live live music, or stroll through Sunset's garden and backyard farm. And if you just can't make it to this final day, keep in mind that next year's Savor event is already in the planning stages and is expected to have even more choices. Continue listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio throughout the year, and we'll keep you updated. Hurry up and head to Santa Margarita Ranch because there's still a full day of excitement left to enjoy. For more information, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. Come to Paso Robles to eat, drink, and explore the fresh additions to the Paso Robles Inn Steakhouse menu from Chef Kevin's Organic Kitchen Garden. Whether you're there for the exquisite champagne Sunday brunch, seasonal dinner special, or prime rib Wednesday, you'll enjoy this season's harvest from the Organic Kitchen Garden, including fruits, vegetables, and herbs incorporated into the menu daily. Don't forget to take a tour of the gardens next time you visit the Steakhouse at the Paso Robles Inn. And stay connected on Facebook and Twitter for upcoming specials, recipes, events, and more. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning. Live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County and online at Eat, Drink, Explore.com. Also, check out our new free smartphone and tablet app. 
Simply search three words, eat, drink, explore, either in Google Play on your Android device or in the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. This free app gives you access to contests, past radio segments, our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on The Crush. Eat, drink, explore media, your source for the lifestyle you love. Good Sunday morning to you on this final day of September. It is September the 30th. And do you use the knuckle thing, the knuckle trick to figure out how many days a month has in it? I'm your host, Randall White, by the way. This is Edric Explore Radio. Patty, I have this really cool way of figuring out the days of the month. Uh, your iPhone? Like, iPhone. <laughs> She's holding up her iPhone. <laughs> iPhone calendar. <laughs> well, if you don't have your phone with you, you can always use your knuckle. And if it's... Uh-huh. A, if it's a, a, you know, the top part of the knuckle, that means it's a longer month, like 31 days. If it's the indent in between your knuckles, then that means it is a day with fewer, like uh, September. It only has okay. 30. So you just go across the top, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then you hit that one twice, August, and then back across the other way. Okay. Because there's two months in a row that have... Longer, July well, and August. July and August, mm-hmm. right. And it just works per- perfectly. I learned it as a child, and it has come in very, very <laughs> handy. <laughs> Good to know. It It comes in handy. (laughs) It does. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so our compass for today is fresh, and that means that all of our topics and our guests are tied together with one word, and that word is fresh. Mm -hmm. And joining us right now is Alan Flora with the County of Lake, which if you don't know where that is, if you've been to the Napa Valley, you got really close. (laughs) You just needed to go up and over Mount St. Helena, and then you would find... Situated there beautifully among the mountains is California's largest freshwater lake. A lot of people think that would be Lake Tahoe, but you have to remember we share Tahoe with another That's state. That's right, yeah. And so uh, the largest freshwater lake within 100% within the boundary of California is Clear Lake. And a very good day to you, Alan. Hi, Rano. How are you today? Fantastic. Thank you for being on the show. And I'm so excited to learn about some of the trails that are being developed there in Lake County. My parents had a home up in Lake County. My sister still has a uh, house right on uh, Clear Lake. And so I do find myself up in that region of the state quite often. And it does have very clean, fresh air. And it's perfect for getting out and enjoying that uh, through hiking. Absolutely, it is. We're really excited about some of the projects we have going on. Um, you know, the the clean air thing is kind of funny because uh, I grew up in the Midwest, and um, a lot of people from the Midwest who had respiratory problems like moved to Arizona or somewhere. And now that I'm out here, there's people from Arizona moving up here for uh, fresh <laughs> right. clean air. So. Yeah, yeah, Patty. Patty's originally <laughs> from Phoenix, and yes. she can tell you that it's not necessarily the freshest of air in, uh, in no, that No, and my mom's family moved from uh, Peoria, Illinois, because... My uncle had breathing problems, asthma, and they said, go to Arizona. Yeah. And so yeah. now they're showing up in Lake County, huh? Yeah, they are. But it's, it's, a, it's a great place. Like you said, uh, it's, it's fabulous um, up here. And we, uh, we have, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of acres of publicly owned recreational land, um, hundreds of miles of trails. Uh, some of the, the projects that we're most excited about in our recent ones now, we have seven established water loops on Clear Lake, on and around Clear Lake. Really? So you can follow, you can literally follow the lake shoreline around the lake, at least to some degree? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we put some brochures together. Um, you know, we have them all gps and uh, things to look for where you can see uh, specific birds, um, hot springs, that sort of thing. Mm. They have became really popular. Um, you mentioned Tahoe earlier, and this doesn't happen to us a lot, but they've actually started copying this program from us. Uh, hey, you got to like that, right? <laughs> flattery, yeah. right? Yeah, that is, that is flattery. Okay, so from my parents' old deck, uh, they had this beautiful view of Mount Kanaktai, which is the feature mountain in Lake County. It's right there. It's a, I think it's a dormant volcano. Absolutely, uh, yes. It sits right there at the, you know, at the... The cliffs come right on down to uh, the lake, and for the longest time, I wanted to hike to the top of that, but was told <laughs> you can't, it's private land, there's no trail, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, what a bummer, because that's the most beautiful mountain, and it's begging to be climbed. 
Those days are over, right? Those days are over. That's right. Yeah, we had the opportunity uh, a few years ago to purchase the. There was a you know a family that had owned all of the main peaks and the majority of that mountain uh, for years and years. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of people who have lived here their whole life and looked at that mountain every day and never been able to to see the top of it or experience it. And so the county um, is generally in a pretty good financial situation. We had some one-time funds. We were able to purchase 1,520 acres at the top of that mountain. And so just a year ago this past weekend, we opened it up um, as the county's largest park. Really? Um, So we're very excited about that. It's, uh, there's, I don't know, a couple of, couple of main trails now that take you to Wright Peak, which is uh, 4,300 feet. Um, elevation about a 1700 foot elevation gain uh, over three miles mm-hmm. and we're this this fall and winter we're going to be expanding a lot of the trails there um, you know it's a large area BLM owns another 800 acres up there Bureau of Land um, Management and so there's a lot of public land uh, we have some some money we're looking to purchase some more of that mountain because just the views are unparalleled I mean with our with our clean air, you know we can see um, the Sierras easily. Um, you can really see the Sierra day, from there. Back down, yeah, back down into. The, we can actually see the bay um, in San Francisco. So wow, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Oh, that is some clean air. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellen, uh, as I understand it, like you said, there have there are people that have lived their entire lives looking up at that mountain and wanted to climb it and couldn't, and maybe now just can't because they're not in the stage of their mm-hmm. life where they can do some climbing with elevation gain, like you say. Yeah. As I understand it, you, there's a program that just went into effect this month that w- they will take you up there in a van. Yeah, that's true. We were able to, um, you know, we got a lot of requests because of the elevation gain. You know, it's steep, and uh, a lot of folks, that are older weren't able to make it so we partnered with our local transit authority and so six times um, throughout the the rest of the year and I guess into the spring too we have uh, our, we're selling tickets and so it's like a little van ride they can get up there um, go up and there's a there's an old Cal Fire lookout tower um, which offers 360 degree views that I was mentioning earlier. So yeah. we just had our first one here a couple of weeks ago and the response has been overwhelming. I imagine if you oh, can cool. s- Isn't that cool, Patty? Yeah. I imagine if you can see the Sierra and you can see the bay then you can probably see Shasta. Um yes, I I have seen it once. It's the conditions have to be pretty good even outside of our air basin to be able to do that. But I have seen it one time from the fire tower, yeah. Wow. So basically <laughs> oh, from cool. that one spot mm-hmm. ma- on the top of Mount Canocti in Lake County, you basically get a view of Northern California. Absolutely. 360 degrees. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, besides that, there's a lot of other cool history. There's a, a lady that uh, homesteaded on the mountain in 1903. Um by herself her husband died she moved up there there's no water on that mountain um and so there's her cabin is still there um so you can hike over check that out her son-in-law is buried there under this biggest uh, gravestone you've ever seen with his name carved into it and there's just there's a lot of cool history a lot of tribal history on that mountain and um so yeah it's a great experience we're we're just thrilled with uh having the opportunity to be able to purchase that and open it to the public. Sounds so intriguing. It is. And it's one of those easy getaways from the Bay Area that I think uh, people, you know, some people think about it, but mm-hmm. others just are just clueless that about <laughs> where that they it is. they even have that option. That they even, right. So uh, if your thoughts are to, you know, explore maybe Sonoma and Napa, well, this is just one jump mm-hmm. over uh, up to Lake County. And it really is a fabulous area of the state. I've had the opportunity to explore it for years, and I'm really glad that I have. And now there are some trails to help you enjoy that fresh air. Alan Flora with the County of Lake, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Yeah, yeah, I would just like to say, too, I mean, we have uh, our wine industry is growing. Uh, we got some premium high elevation wines. Good stuff uh, Which is a, a nice mix with our recreational stuff, so... You know, check out CanoctiTrails.com, LakeCounty.com, uh, see what we're all about. Come and visit us. Yeah, Siego Winery there, the uh, Vine Garden, definitely worth checking out. Uh, part of the Fetzer family, I believe. And, yeah. Uh, 
Boy, just uh, some great stuff there in Lake County. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate your time. And like he said, canoctitrails.com. If you can't spell that, don't worry about it. It is <laughs> eatdrinkexplore.com. We provide the link for you. All right, stick around. We're back in just a moment with celebrity chef Nathan Lyon. The historic Santa Margarita Ranch, exactly halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles off Highway 101, was founded in the mid-1700s and served as an assistant mission to the nearby mission in San Luis Obispo. The 14,000 acres that make up the ranch today have served a variety of purposes over the years, including grazing land for large herds of Mexican cattle, prime vineyard land, and this fall will once again host the main event for Sunset Savor the Central Coast, the West Coast premier food and wine event, September the 27th through the 30th to culminate California Wine Month. Meet top chefs from the Central Coast as well as nationally recognized culinary celebrities. Several chef demonstrations will be featured, including the Battle of the Bay, hosted by the Food Network's Ted Allen of Chopped. To purchase tickets, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. You've heard us talk about Sunset Savor the Central Coast for the past month now, and today is the final day to take advantage of this amazing event at Santa Margarita Ranch. The festivities start right when the show ends at 10 o'clock this morning and continue through the day until 5 this evening. You can wander the marketplace and taste from more than 100 local wineries, sample small bites from restaurateurs, or relax in the Estrada Garden with a beer from one of the local breweries. Hey, you can also listen to live live music, or stroll through Sunset's garden and backyard farm. And if you just can't make it to this final day, keep in mind that next year's Savor event is already in the planning stages and is expected to have even more choices. Continue listening to Eat, Drink, Explore radio throughout the year, and we'll keep you updated. Hurry up and head to Santa Margarita Ranch because there's still a full day of excitement left to enjoy. For more information, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.mpca.org. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air, we're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. Good morning, everyone. Great to have you with us on this final day of September. (laughs) It is the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. I'm your host, Randall White. Yeah, September the 30th. 
Joined by the lovely and talented Patty Pyburn. Hello, Patty. Hello. Good morning. Happy so, Sunday. Yes. And so if it is September 30th, that means it is the culmination of California Wine Month. Mm-hmm. Which uh, does not mean you have to stop drinking California wine. It's a reason to drink, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason to go out and celebrate, right? It, it's the final day. And then as uh, with all of the different celebrations going on throughout the state for California Wine Month, the big one, the closer outer is Sa- Sunset Savor the Central Coast, which let me tell you, uh, we happen to be in San Luis Obispo and... Last night, trying to get a dinner table at any of the sort of fresh local restaurants, because that's what's on on everyone's mind Uh that's uh, going to savor. Right. It was close to impossible. I can't remember the last time that Novo, which is right on uh, Higuera Street mm-hmm. here in San Luis, uh, that I've gone in there and the wait was an hour and 45 minutes. I mean, that's just not <laughs> typical, you know. Like, where am I? <laughs> I know, so, uh, yeah, am I? Am I in L.A.? Am I in New York? No, I'm in San Luis Obispo and there's a, a long wait. That's because people from L.A. and San Francisco mm-hmm. are down or up this way, depending on where you're coming from, uh, to experience Saber. And... Boy, there is a long list of celebrity chefs that are at Savor. We talked with mm-hmm. uh, Ted Allen on the phone a little bit earlier. And uh, one celebrity chef that will be there today with cooking demonstrations and book signings and all that sort of thing is celebrity chef Nathan Lyon. And he joins us in studio right now. Welcome to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. You know, I was l- watching some of your videos on... I- I don't have cable. Is that weird? <laughs> I, I actually think it's starting to become more normal. <laughs> actually, I, I don't have cable. Is that weird? Yeah. Oh, you don't. Okay. No. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, I'm on cable, but I'm also on PBS. So we're coming into our fourth season of PBS. And one of the things I'd like to do, in, in addition to what's happening at Savor, is when you when you cook and you speak with people, you build community and you work with farmers. And that's really the, the, the trade secret of being a great chef, is using the best, freshest, most seasonal ingredients. Right. And that is something that has developed in California over the last 30 years or so. I mean, a lot of people uh, targeted all the way back to the opening of uh, Chez Panisse by Alice Waters. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much the standard thought that that sort of started the change the the menu based on what's in season? Well, it's interesting because when uh, I have two shows going on right now, Growing a Greener World on PBS, which you can watch for free through the internet Ooh, well, and right. another one exactly right. it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a good four letter F word free is a good one food of course is another one that's so another that's one, yeah. what a free sample is at a farmer's market and the other one is on a network called Varia Living called uh, Good Food America and we traveled all around America and we went to different restaurants that support the local food purveyors and you can be in the middle of nowhere and still find a really great restaurant mom and pop owned and that's what it's really all about about community isn't it? I love that. In fact, uh, just the other day, well, it was, it was after the show. Uh, we were all wandering around downtown looking for a place to eat. And there were, you know, sometimes you can just, it, clearly someone is a tour, a group is a tour, you know, mm-hmm. tourists. It's all about the pants. You can just tell yeah. from the pants. <laughs> and so I saw this group and they were standing around talking. And w- one of the people in the group said, uh, well, I think just on the outskirts of town, there's that olive garden. And I thought, oh, wow. What? You know, and nothing against Olive <laughs> yeah. Garden. No, I'm just but there's saying, just so many yeah. great choices here for diversity and local. And what if you're if you're visiting, if you're touring, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe if you live here and you want to mix it up and you know try yeah. something uh, that that you don't have every day, uh, you might try out go out to Olive Garden or something. But it just surprised me that someone would think on those lines. Well, I mean, people only know what they know, and mm-hmm. you know, you're when you're familiar with something, that's what you're drawn to. And what I'm what I'm finding is that. You know, since convenience uh, at the end of World War II, you know, when we started going to frozen packaged food and convenience Mm -hmm. comes at a price. And I think that we're experiencing that right now as a nation, like the obesity rates and things that are that are very much geared toward. I don't want to say it's completely responsible, but packaged food, fast food has a lot to do with that. And now there's this wonderful national backlash that's happening. Yeah. And you can find it everywhere in the U.S. And that's why farmers markets are growing exponentially. Young farmers. I mean, right here at UC Davis, and, you know, different things about um, sustainable. You can get a you can get a master's degree mm-hmm. in, in sustainability in sustainability with farming and organics. And now big things like the GMO uh, vote that's coming on yeah. with, the, with Proposition 37. Right. It's right. in November. Right. You know, Nathan, we're having on the show one month from now, the 28th of October, we are having the woman who spearheaded the 37 uh, proposition uh, will be sitting 
probably right where you are. <laughs> I will keep the seat warm for her. Yeah. And then and then we have a professor on the other side from UC Davis who's a, a geneticist, and um, he's going to give the argument on for that side, which I've made very clear as the host of the show. I am on the pro Prop 37 mm-hmm. side. Sure. Uh, the sure. LA Times just came out with a story this last week saying that that looks like it's going to pass, that, it, that even with the millions 30 yeah. plus million dollars Correct. that the large companies have put into the no campaign yeah. uh it still looks like it's about six out of ten people uh voting Four. saying yes yeah. well it's over 90 percent of the people across the nation want yeah. to know what's in their food and it's not it's not that i mean from from my perspective i am i am pro knowing what's in my food also yeah and i'm not even saying that genetically modified foods are bad i'm Me just neither. saying if yeah. it's in there i want to know it's in there and interestingly enough a lot of the companies that are throwing tens of millions of dollars tour the against also own a lot of organic companies because yes. what's happening right now in the nation is that processed food is dwindling but organic food is growing so if you want to survive in this nation and when it comes to food you have to get to where things are growing exponentially and organics unprocessed foods whole foods things that our great grandparents ate things you know things that we know as food that the only ingredient that I would eat is like if I'm going to eat an egg I want to just say egg Right? right. I don't want it to Sorry say hydrogel agented, you know, high fructose right. corn syrup. I'm right. like, it's just an egg. Can't you just eat the egg? And that's one of the things I'm sharing today at Savor the Central Coast. It's it's just really a wonderful opportunity to get to know your friends, to get to know the farmers, uh, to get to know this area, which is absolutely stunning. You guys get to wake up every day Aren't we lucky? and look at this. It is really beautiful. And if you and if you can't make it today and you just happen to be uh, coming through California, by all means, when you're in earshot, swing by San Luis Obispo. It's just absolutely beautiful. It and is. the people are just as beautiful. It is. Oh, thank you. Of course. <laughs> of course, both in mind and spirit. <laughs> there are, I, I ride my bike to work uh, daily, did this morning, as a matter of fact. And uh, when I'm riding in along the Madonna bike path mm-hmm. trail and I you reach a point where there's a little hill and uh, I can sort of look toward the downtown and I just think, wow, yeah. like this is by design. <laughs> this is you. You have to choose. I had to choose that as my route into work. I had to choose the location where I live and that sort of thing. So uh, I don't always think, oh, I'm so lucky because I kind of did m- make it happen. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? <laughs> right. But uh, but you're right. This is just such an amazing, uh, amazing spot. All of coastal California, really. We're really lucky. Well, I wouldn't say all of it. There, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a couple stretches. <laughs> that I don't know if I necessarily want to be, but well, uh, I mean, California is, I mean, it's beautiful. It grows it some of the most amazing mm-hmm. food, but traveling around, um, I'm from Virginia, Arlington, Virginia, mm-hmm. and I lived in Colorado a little while. And you, f- you find magnificent people. You find beauty really everywhere you, where you go, as long as you're open to the, the beauty. The key is looking. The key is looking. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think you were talking about the Olive Garden is that if you're used to going to the Olive Garden and getting the same thing, it's processed to the point where it's going to taste exactly the same. The most successful restaurant in, in humanity is McDonald's because you could be in... You could be in Russia, you could be in China, mm-hmm. and the Big Mac's always going to taste the same because it's processed to be exactly like that. Yeah. I love going to farmer's markets and saying, this tomato is a different tomato than it was last week, and the one next week's going to be different also yeah. because it's this exploration. It's such a visceral, lovely um, quality of being a human being is going there and then also meeting the people that grow it. And then what I find when you meet the people that grow it, having worked at farmers markets for over 10 years, you don't just throw it away. You don't just let it rot. No. Because if you go to a super mega mart where you can get 30 boneless, skinless chicken breasts, right? if you burn one, you know what? You got 29 more. And those chickens, they probably weren't raised very well. But when you meet the guy that raises the chicken or the woman that raises the chicken and brings it to you, then it becomes more than just a boneless, skinless piece of flesh, then it becomes something that's part of your community. And that's what I just love about it. The only place where the Big Mac doesn't taste the same is in, <laughs> is in India, where they have a new vegetarian menu. The, the, uh, <laughs> I just read it. Like, well, they're not really big in eating cows in different right, parts of right. India. No, so I so I, that's, I that's, think, part of it. It was, just a, it was a news article that came up uh, like last week or the week before that the first veget- all the vegetarian, vegetarian McDonald's. And I was like, wow, well, I've never heard of that. But you're right. Other than that one. Um, <laughs> That's funny. So something, I get sort of the vibe that you like things that are fresh. <laughs> well, yes. Well, the new, the cookbook that you have in your hand, which yes. is uh, Great Food Starts Fresh. It's a, 
It's a uh, seasonal cookbook. It took me six years to complete. I did all the photography on it. And uh, my girlfriend and executive sous chef, Sarah Foreman, who's also in the studio with us today, um, took the photo of me on the front. And she tested every single recipe in my tiny galley kitchen. Now, that is dedication. Well, yeah. and it's, it's, it's interesting because when you go uh, to a farmer's market or when you go to the grocery store like most Americans do, about 75% of most Americans will buy from either Walmart or grocery stores, all of their produce. And they don't necessarily know what's in season because we're so separate separated from seasons because everything's in season in the grocery store. Right. You can buy anything anytime. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is with the book, it makes it a little bit more simple because you can just open to whatever that season is. By the way, there are five seasons in my cookbook oh. and the fifth season is chocolate because that's the, <laughs> that is the that's universal great. season, yes. right? That's it's awesome. the universal season. Well, <laughs> Chef Nathan Lyon, this book of yours that I'm holding, and it's a, that's a weighty book. That's it's, yes. These yes. are the type of books I love. Uh, this one right here, can be yours at home or wherever you might be in the car or on your way up to savor the Central Coast. Uh, it'll be a signed version as well. We'll explain how you can win it right after this commercial break when we bring uh, Chef Lion back to also discuss a bit more of what he'll be doing at Savor the Central Coast because if you don't win this copy, you can get one up at that event. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network on this Sunday morning. We are back in just a moment. The historic Santa Margarita Ranch, exactly halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles off Highway 101, was founded in the mid-1700s and served as an assistant mission to the nearby mission in San Luis Obispo. The 14,000 acres that make up the ranch today have served a variety of purposes over the years, including grazing land for large herds of Mexican cattle, prime vineyard land, and this fall will once again host the main event for Sunset Savor the Central Coast, the West Coast premier food and wine event, September the 27th through the 30th to culminate California Wine Month. Meet top chefs from the Central Coast as well as nationally recognized culinary celebrities. Several chef demonstrations will be featured, including the Battle of the Bay, hosted by the Food Network's Ted Allen of Chopped. To purchase tickets, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. You've heard us talk about Sunset Savor the Central Coast for the past month now, and today is the final day to take advantage of this amazing event at Santa Margarita Ranch. The festivities start right when the show ends at 10 o'clock this morning and continue through the day until 5 this evening. You can wander the marketplace and taste from more than 100 local wineries, sample small bites from restaurateurs, or relax in the Estrada Garden with a beer from one of the local breweries. Hey, you can also listen to live Live music or stroll through Sunset's garden and backyard farm. And if you just can't make it to this final day, keep in mind that next year's Savor event is already in the planning stages and is expected to have even more choices. Continue listening to Eat, Drink, Explore radio throughout the year and we'll keep you updated. Hurry up and head to Santa Margarita Ranch because there's still a full day of excitement left to enjoy. For more information, head to SavorCentralCoast.com. What do your status updates say? You're learning a new language? Going all organic? Instead of typing your feelings, what if you could put them into action? By creating a network to help keep kids off the streets in a country like Armenia or in Honduras, bringing IT into the classroom or on a farm in Tanzania helping stem the world's food crisis by creating a sustainable agricultural program. What if every ounce of your being helped update the status of a person, and in turn, they did the same for you? Would this be enough social interaction? Or is this only the beginning of something larger? Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Get interactive at peacecorps.gov game. 
Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning. Live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County and online at Eat, Drink, drinkexplore.com. Also, check out our new free smartphone and tablet app. Simply search three words, Eat, Drink, Explore, either in Google Play on your Android device or in the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. This free app gives you access to contests, past radio segments, our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on The Crush. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your source for the lifestyle you love. And a very good morning. Great to have you joining us for the final segment now of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio uh, for this final day of September on the final day of California Wine Month and the final day of Savor the Central Coast yes. here in San Luis Obispo County. If you're listening to us up in uh, Santa Cruz or uh, San Jose, Monterey County, you know, uh, Monterey County and Santa Barbara County wines are featured uh, among with uh, along with some other things like, uh, I believe, the Monterey Bay Aquarium mm-hmm. has a whole uh, sus- sustainable seafood section there at Saver. Indeed. I think you're right about that. Yeah. So it's not just 100% San Luis Obispo County, but that's uh, definitely the focus up there at Santa Margarita Ranch today. Uh, but you have plenty of time to drive down and hit the main event. It will be fantastic with all sorts of education is one of the big components there at uh, Santa Margarita Ranch and the Saver event today. A lot of uh, chefs, celebrity chefs, uh, showing you how to do things. How And in one case, uh, Chef Nathan Lyon, who joins us in studio right Right now, he will. And I'm sorry, I introduced you right as you were drinking water. Um, <laughs> uh, he will be teaching people how to source fresh. And I imagine here in California, Nathan, we're a little bit spoiled when it comes to having fresh produce. Right. Right. But, but the interesting thing is when you're uh, at a farmer's market or even at the grocery store, what I like to say is Mother Nature has put everything in front of you that you should be eating at that time of the year. So she's she's pretty smart. She was here well before we were here. <laughs> right. She set it all up. And if you don't even know necessarily what you should be eating, just kind of listen to your body. So if it's 95 degrees outside and I say, I'm going to make for you this amazing roast butternut squash risotto with extra cream and extra cheese, you're like, it might be a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Right? So those <laughs> Uh-huh. All, but butternut squash and Tahitian squash, those are all things in uh, mid-fall. Right now, it's still a little warm, so we're talking about fresh berries still. We're talking about tomatoes, onions, carrots, I mean, all the things that, that would work together. Like yesterday, I made a wonderful uh, roast eggplant caponata, which is like... Which is like a, um, What's a ratatouille. A it's like a ratatouille, oh, okay. uh-huh. but Yum. it has uh, capers and green olives, a little bit of red pepper flakes. And all mm. those things that go in there Sounds really grow good. at the exact same time. So all those foods work really well together. They just naturally marry well. They naturally marry well. So when you're going to the grocery store in the middle of winter and you're wondering why those blueberries are six fifty for a pint, it's because they come from Chile and you shouldn't be eating them because those are very cooling to the body. Right. So if it's hot out, you eat cooling things. If it's if it's cool out, you eat warming things, and those are exactly what Mother Nature puts in front of you during the exact time you should be eating them. It's and, fascinating. Mm-hmm. And these are the sort of things that you'll be teaching at Savor today? Oh, yes. I'll be uh, preparing um, two really um, vibrant things, one of which is a salad. It's an apple fennel salad because apples oh. are, you can pick apples right now. They're right. coming into season. Mm-hmm. I had a fennel salad for dinner last night excellent. at, oh, yeah. Refreshing, at, at, right? Right. What's the name of the place? Sidecar. 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 Okay. Sidecar. Yeah, delicious place. Um, Locally it was organic. fantastic. Well, I'll also Excellent. be celebrating um, the, the last of watermelons. So I'll be doing a spicy chilled watermelon gazpacho Whoa. that you make in a blender. 
So Yum. as far as ease and as far as like teaching people how to pick out a watermelon or how to properly store strawberries, you know, why do my strawberries last almost two weeks and most people's a couple days? Mm -hmm. Those are the things I learned from farmers. And everybody has access to the same farmers and farmers markets that I do. And when you go to a wonderful restaurant and you're like, why is this so good? It's because they source the freshest, most seasonal ingredients that have the most flavor. That, and you can too. That's the best thing. You can too. You, you can, can too. You can, too. you can do it at home. I get sad at the end of watermelon season because <laughs> I, I, I love fall. Don't get me wrong. Like This mm -hmm. is my favorite season, actually, especially here in California. The fog stays off the coast and we just uh, really, I think it's the best weather California has uh, for the next couple of months. But I just, I want to have a big slice of watermelon every day, but uh, I do stop eating it. There's a point where I'm like, this doesn't mm -hmm. taste right anymore. Okay, so. Uh, if people can't see you up at Saver today, they can get your tips in your book. That's uh, right. Great food starts fresh. And you can get this copy of the book right now if you are, let's see, it's the fourth day of Saver, so we'll take the fourth caller. Okay. <laughs> uh, and here's the number. It's, uh, uh, you know what? 855. It's 855. It's an 800 number. 855. <laughs> and then it's Randall. But my name is spelled differently. R A N D O L. Yes, R A N D O L, eight. and then eight. You the know, number like eight. Randall eight. And then the, trust me, that's pretty true most of the time. <laughs> but uh, so it's eight five five Randall eight, and I don't know what those numbers are. Uh, you know what? Oh, you know what? I do have them here. It's uh, it's eight five five seven two six three six five eight. So eight five five seven two six three six Five, eight, if you're the fourth caller, Nate, and oh, I already hear the phone ringing, <laughs> you're, you will, uh, you'll get this so personally autographed to you and then we'll figure out how to get it to you. So. And it's such good information. And I like what you were saying earlier, Nathan, that it's in a way we're coming full circle. If you talk to old timers, they're kind of like, duh, that's what we've been doing for years. Right. right. This is how grandparents were cooking originally. That's right. Before it's, Velveeta and everything hit the store shelves. <laughs> well, I mean, again, it's like uh, processed food comes at a price. It's very fast, very quick. People don't have a lot of time. But the things that I like to share is, for example, even if you went down the street and got a rotisserie chicken, no, I mean, I, I got no feelings about that. It's usually organic, which is wonderful. But save those bones and get those flaccid vegetables that are in your crisper drawer right now. You can put them all in the pot, a little bit of water, and you made your own stock for free. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any corn syrup. It doesn't have any colorings. It doesn't have any extra sugar. Nothing like that. And you've already paid for it. So instead of throwing away those old vegetables, you can just throw the chicken bones in there. And you made stocks. So you're actually saving money. And it's better for flavor. And it's better for your health. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like the less is more routine. You know, right. People think you have to have a lot of money to eat well. And actually, it's almost exactly the opposite. When I grew up, we didn't have much money at all, and we couldn't afford to go out to eat. Mm -hmm. So my grandparents, their garden, which is three houses down the road, we got a lot of food from the garden, and yet it's like now everyone wants that sort of lifestyle right. where you have your own garden, where you don't have to go out to eat, where you want to eat locally sourced food, and everybody can do that. Right. And, you know, I was, you just have to get into that mindset, into that thinking, that routine. You do. It's a habit. Mm -hmm. and the thing is, if you usually, you know, wake up and you smoke a cigarette and watch TV, maybe you can have a cup of coffee and go for a walk with your dog. There's your new habit. Mm -hmm. So it's all about just replacing an old habit for a new habit. And when it comes to cooking, that's one of the reasons why I made this cookbook. And I took all the photographs so you see exactly what it looks like there's no glue there's no plastic I, I would cook it in my little galley kitchen put it on a table and take a photo of it and if you don't win this book that's okay <laughs> <laughs> actually you can get the book and learn more about it through my website which is chef nathan lion Dot com. It's a great site. Thank I went you there. Very yeah, much. I really. And do we have that like link it. on Eat Drink Explore? We do. And okay. so if you go to the program summary at eatdrinkexplore.com, anyone you heard on the show today, you can uh, find their link right there. And um, we, I don't know if Nicole has the information yet, so we can give a shout For out the to the person. But if we run out of time and can't do that, uh, you will be signing the book, and then I you'll will. be signing a lot more of them up at Saver uh, later today. That's right. Saver, the last day, you have a chance to go see Nathan Lyon. That's right. Right. Hey, Nicole, do we have a winner's name? 
Oh, it sounds like she's on the phone right now. <laughs> well, I can't wait to sign the book to you. I'm really excited, yeah. and thank you so much for your time, guys. It's just been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic to have you here. Loved having you listen in today. Don't forget, we're here every single week. You can watch this show again at eatdrinkexplore.com, and like we said, get all the links under the program summaries. Make it a great day, everyone, on this final day of September. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.